Baruch Fleischman here at the Tikkun Elevator Kolo. And we're going to be learning Rabbi Memron's great Sefer, The Ultimate Connection with God, the Seven-Step Guide to Jewish Spirituality. And we're actually trying to think of how it is that we can do this. This works in every different phase of your life. And I know that is from the point of view of a person who's a Breslover, it's exactly what Rabbi Nachman is working on. He's trying to teach us how we can be Dalvik to Hashem. So here comes a guy outside of the Breslover framework, and he's doing it too. But this is a terrific book. It can help us a lot. So this one, of course, is called Connecting with Your Soul, Your Neshama. And let's uh, look at the page, the page here. There it is. It's a big, you need the seven-step guide. Let's go on. So he says, in order to understand this pas, this pasuk, which says, Ladav Kabo, and this is the word, these are the words of the Ramban. So he said, V'zel Lashon of Yisakein Shetekaloch HaDeveka Lema, that you incorporate in your clinging, and say like this, Shetichia Zoycher Hashem V'achavosu Tamit, that in the days of your life, he says, you should constantly be aware of the fact of the fa uh, of of Hashem, His tremendous love, and you should try to lo sifarad machshav not separate your thought ever mimenu from God. But lachtecha when you're walking b'derech, b'shachma when you lie down, when you get up in the morning, ad sheyed the varav until th these words, your fur, your you as you speak in b'nei adam with people b'piv using your mouth, you know, it comes out of your mouth the shana your tongue. And also he adds in, in your heart, in other words, you have intention to speak. And then only him. you're not really with them in their mentality. Ella, of all, who lives near Hashem. But the person sees himself in the presence of Hashem. V'yasakein, so therefore, it's possible. Ba'an Shemala, we see that in the great men of great height, men of Ma'ala Hazos, of this ability to be able to see Hashem, and everything that they're doing. That they should have their souls also in their lives. That their souls, in other words, their physicality as they're walking and moving in the world should be bound also to the binding of life itself. Because the people, us, ourselves, the Shekhinah lives within us. It's alive. So now he writes in English. Uh, he, you will recognize when you're davik to Hashem, you have achieved true connection with Hashem. How do you know this? When all your attention is to focus above, even when discussing mundane matters with friend. That even when you're in a business situation or talking to your wife or your children, that you're aware of the fact that Hashem is involved in this conversation. That awareness is a tremendous thing. So now Rabbi Mimran writes, he says, there is another way you can create a gap in your mental stream besides the watching the thinker. Because the watching the thinker allows you to, to, to dissociate yourself from your thoughts. Uh, that approach we've already discussed. Now you can move right past the thoughts in your mind. Instead of watching your thoughts, go past them. And focus your attention directly and fully, uh, fully on your connection with your own eternal neshama. The eternity lives within you. And it is possible for us to be able to look at that. And to focus and put our attention in on the neshama. How do you do this? Simply becoming intensely conscious of your neshama's holy presence is powerfully transformative. And he says, as we will explain in the coming chapters. He says, and deeply also satisfying. You get a geschmack from this. When you focus your attention in this way, you draw your awareness away from the activity of your mind. And in doing so, you create a gap of no mind, which opens you up to absolute presence within yourself now it probably is a is a letter or some word to an absolute present within yourself that spiritual state of interconnectedness in which you are highly alert and aware 
without being distracted by your thinking mind. So he says, the presence within yourself, to be aware of it. It's not thinking. It's in a deeper place. It could be watching. But here he says, you can move right to it in all the things you do. So this is the essence of meditation, a practice that can bring you so much closer to closer to your creator. Thus, for example, so you're going to go through a few examples here. Every time you walk up the stairs in your house or in your place of work, Pay close attention to your every step and every movement. Pay, pay really good attention there. Even your breathing. Be total, totally present with and fully focused on your walk up that stairs, step by step. The feeling that you have, the, the tread on the, uh, your, your foot treading on the step, the hands and so on and so forth. Similarly, when you wash your hands, pay attention to everything you sense when you're doing so. Notice the sound of the running water. The feel of the water on your skin, the movement of your hands, the scent of the soap, and so on. Or when you settle into your car after you close the, after you close the door. Pause for just a second, just a few seconds, before turning on the engine and observe the flow of your breath. So for example, this also seems to me like it's a kind of listening too. Get used to the fact of listening to yourself, not the thoughts. Become aware of a silent but powerful sense of presence that you begin to feel. If any of these mindfulness practices, and I think it means mindful practices, I think it's a misspelling there, leave you with a feeling of inner peace, if you find that you're trying to do this. And I know for myself that there are times when everything is going pretty smooth, I don't think too much about much. I mean, whatever I'm doing, I'm not meditating. He's telling me that I can meditate in everything, but also I know myself that everything doesn't go well. Frustration comes in and maybe anger and upset. So with all of these things, this technique actually can work. Just watch yourself, but then you can watch more specifically. Watch the way your toes feel. This is what Rabbi Memron told me. So he said that any of these mindful practices leave you with a feeling of inner peace, even momentarily, then you know you're doing it right. The single most vital step on your journey toward achieving a true attachment to the Rebbe Shalom is to learn to separate yourself from your mind. Once you no longer identify with your mind's activity, I am my mind. It's like, I am my mind. My mind is me. When you internalize the understanding that your mind is not you, the path is wide open for you to reach great spiritual heights. Every time you succeed in creating a gap in the stream of your thoughts, you strengthen your connection to your neshama. With a little practice, you may one day find yourself hearing the voice in your head. You can hear that actually when you quiet down the thoughts, what's going to come into your head. And you could hear, say, now a thought comes into your head and you simply are smiling at it as you would smile at the antics of a young child. When that happens, you will know that you are no longer taking the ongoing conversations in your, conversations in your mind so seriously for your sense of self no longer depends on it. His final word in summation, simply becoming intensely conscious of your neshama's holy presence is powerfully transformative and deeply satisfying. This is Baruch Fleischman here at the Tikkun Elevator Kolo for Dvekas with Rabbi, Rabbi Yosef Chaim Memran. His book, the ultimate connection with God.